Hi YouTube, so my name is Elizabeth. I am a labor and delivery nurse and today I wanted to film a video about 10 things your labor and delivery nurse wants you to know or wishes that you knew maybe before you came in. So I'm just going to go ahead and go through the list and I have one bonus one at the end that's a little bit silly but happens a lot. So I have been a labor and delivery nurse and a postpartum nurse for the past almost five years since I graduated from nursing school. Um, so I have a lot of experience, I would say, with new moms and people who've never had babies before and all that good stuff. And I was a new mom who'd never had a baby before, obviously, new mom, never had a baby before. And so I think that I can hopefully really speak to some people's worries and fears and just let them know some things and maybe give you guys a few laughs too. So I have a list on my phone I'm going to be kind of referring to. Um, one, number one, you do not need to apologize. I think most people, like when they start getting real into active labor and they get guttural and they get in the zone and they get really primal they want to apologize a lot or they want to apologize you know for not saying thank you or for cursing or anything like that and you do not need to apologize we know where you are we know what to expect we have signed up for this job if at the end you want to say hey sorry if i was going cuckoo bananas you can but don't feel like you need to stop yourself from being in the moment of laboring to apologize to your labor nurse you can be downright mean to us. I always say as long as you don't kick me in the face, we're good. Then I had a patient with an epidural accidentally um, lose her leg balance on a peanut ball and she kind of kicked me in the face and she was mortified and she was one who likes to apologize and she was apologizing a lot. So that being said, if it makes you feel better to apologize, like apologize. Just don't feel like you have to apologize because you don't and we know what's going on we get where you're coming from you don't have to apologize um number two is kind of a serious one that is really important do not hesitate if you are at home and you're worried about something do not hesitate to call your doctor most offices at least where i work um, have an answering line so you can reach the doctors after hours and that is literally their job is to answer your questions, alleviate your fears, or tell you to come in if something's going on. We would rather have you call your doctor a hundred times and come in, you know, not because you haven't felt the baby move and find a heartbeat and everything be perfect. I'd rather that happen a hundred times than for you not to call the one time because you don't want to bother anybody and then that's the time when you should have come in type of thing. So that's really important to me. And then number three, kind of going off of that, but do call your doctor first. They're gonna tell you what they want you to do. Unless it's an emergency, um, go ahead and, and give your doctor a call first. Even if you're, you're gonna come in, just to give them the heads up that you're coming. And that way they can be here and be prepared in the hospital. If, for instance, you get there and you want an epidural immediately, like a lot of hospitals, your um, doctor has to be there. So things to think about. Okay, so number four, this kind of goes back to the not apologizing and just like you're in labor, just like you might poop. Let me say it again, really close. You might poop. You might, you might not, but you might poop when you're pushing. And guess what? We don't care. And a good labor nurse will not say a word and will wipe it away and just go on like nothing's happened. You are going to feel like you are pooping yourself the whole time, epidural or not, because your baby's head is literally right on top of where your rectum is, and it's all that same pressure. In fact, a lot of times when people are fully dilated and ready to push, especially if they do have an epidural and have the decreased sensation and everything, they think they have to poop. You just have to have a baby. So give into that feeling of pooping, because that's what it feels like you're doing when you're pushing. Don't care if you poop. I'm gonna wipe it away. I'm not gonna say a word. You will not be able to tell it from my face. We don't care if you poop. In fact, if you're pooping, you're pushing well. So go ahead and poop. Poop everywhere for all I care. Number five. This is a big one. And some labor nurses might not agree with everything that's on my list, just depending on their practices. But I think this is one that all of us will agree with. Our almost number one pet peeve of any labor nurse that you ask is when you have a support person who is not paying attention, you know, on their phone for the whole delivery, doesn't 
even smile when the baby's born just is not into it and that's different from being anxious and being nervous and having to sit down or you being in labor for a long time and your support person is sleeping this is a genuine not wanting to be there and if you don't want to be there then don't like let's get a somebody who's actually supportive to be here with this laboring mother who's working so hard to bring life into the world like don't sit there on your phone don't sit there don't bring video games to play don't sit there watching a football game ignoring your wife moaning in pain just don't do it it's not cool and if you guys don't know how to deal with a laboring woman um take a class do some research look online this is your baby too so just saying number six number six i think this one's important if you are on the monitor we are always watching you. There might be some hospitals that don't have central monitoring, but I would say most do. Everywhere that I have been and I have worked had central monitoring, which means if you're on the monitor, we are at the nurse's station watching you. And if everything seems super normal and then all of a sudden five nurses come running into your room and start flipping and flopping you, it's because we were watching you and things weren't going normal and your baby was having a deceleration in its heart rate. And so your nurses are always watching you, always prepared to jump in and act if need be and so even though you might feel like your nurse hasn't been in in a little while as chances are at night she's gonna let you sleep as much as possible you know with turning and moving and, and offering labor support as needed but we are always watching so don't worry about that we are watching your baby number seven and this is one that I think old school and new school have two different thoughts on this and I think the new school, these ideas are really coming around, especially as women are getting more empowered in their birth. We want you to ask questions. I want you to voice your concerns. I want you to tell me what you're thinking. I want you to have a say in your labor because this is your labor. Um, I really enjoy explaining things. If I'm gonna get there and I'm gonna draw a diagram of a baby coming through the birth canal, I wanna do that for you. I want you to know what's going on. I never want you to feel scared. Um, even in an emergency situation when we're putting oxygen on and flipping and flopping there's chances are there's gonna be one nurse and it might not be your primary nurse there's gonna be a nurse saying okay this is what we're doing this is why we're doing it or afterwards if there is an emergency situation it's gonna be explained to you and I I don't want people to feel like they can't ask questions or to ask questions would be rude because this is your body this is your baby you are have a right to have informed decision-making processes and part of being informed is asking questions about things that you don't understand going off of that one number eight is that I think birth plans are awesome I think it's awesome if you go online and you research what you want and you take classes and you really get you know knowing what you want to do and this and that I think what's important once you have your birth plan all together you need to look at that birth plan and you need to be able to go through it with your doctor before you come in and see if there are things that the hospital will not be able to do. For example, our hospital does not allow laboring women to deliver in the tubs. This isn't because we're mean and because we're against water births. It's simply because our equipment cannot handle all the um, afterbirth and everything from a delivery in the tub. It costs like thousands of dollars to clean the tub after that happens. So. You know, obviously sometimes babies are poured in the tub by accident, but we just can't allow it. So if you have your heart set on a tub delivery, on a water delivery, you might want to research and figure out maybe you need to go to a birth center. Maybe you need to go with midwives. Like hospital births aren't for everyone and that's okay. But knowing your research and making your birth plan and being knowledgeable about what you want, but then also being knowledgeable about where you can do what you want are so important because I want everybody to have their ideal birth you know I want everything to go smoothly um, we all do that's our goal as labor nurses is we want a happy and healthy mom and baby and part of being happy is getting the birth that you want um, and so knowing what you want and where you can go to get it are really important so talk with your doctor you know at your first appointment see what they can do and what they won't do and then maybe you decide to see a different provider and that's okay so something else to keep in mind with your birth plan is that it's okay if it's flexible. It's okay if you get in there and you've never felt this pain before and you want an epidural. It is okay to be flexible. We want you to have this knowledge. We want you to have this power behind it. But if you want to change your mind in the moment, it's okay. Your nurse is on your side. Um, if you ask us not to offer you pain medicine, we won't. But if you want an epidural, just let us know.
that's what we're here for is for you to have your ideal birth and sometimes during your birth your ideal birth changes in your head and that's okay basically mostly what i'm saying is it's okay everything's okay number nine kind of goes off of that there is no one in that room who wants you to have a vaginal delivery as much as you do than your nurse I know there's been a lot of things in the media like, oh, my doctor made me have a C-section because um, he had a, a party to go to or something. Your nurse is not going to be like that. We are there for our 12 hours. We want you to have a vaginal delivery. We want you to have your ideal birth, but we want to have a vaginal delivery, one, because it's um, if the baby looks good, it's healthier for the mom and the baby. It's healthier for future pregnancies. And if everything's going well, and maybe it's just taking a little bit of time, your nurse is the one who at nighttime, you know, doesn't call the doctor to wake them up, to ask them questions. We just, we let them sleep. We let you labor. We really, we want you to have a vaginal delivery. And if I'm going to be frank and honest, it's less work for us if you have a vaginal delivery. And it's better for you and it's better for us. So that's what we want. Your nurse is going to be your advocate, so tell them what you want, and they're going to do their best to get it for you. Now, obviously, if there's an emergency, if the baby's heart rate is down, if something horrible happens, we are going to be the first ones to get you in the OR, but we really want you to have a vaginal delivery, and we are on your team. We are part of your support system. Number 10, a heartfelt thank you note is probably the best thing you can give your labor and delivery nurse you know when you go home and you're thinking gosh I really like I have a bajillion things to do if you have time and you might not and that's okay but if you had a labor nurse who really put it on the line for you who really did a lot for you who got you that ideal delivery or who allowed some flexibility but still got you a healthy baby then write them a thank you note we never say no to food but a heartfelt thank you note really is amazing and it is so it's so meaningful and I keep every single thank you note that I've ever gotten I have in a box in my room and one they're good for us for performance reviews you know just practically but two to know that you had an impact on somebody else's life and on the birth of another human being is amazing I mean it's why we do what we do so when you let us know a few weeks down the line that you're still thinking of us and all that we did for you like that's amazing and we really appreciate it my last um, thing that we want people to know, and this is a silly one, when your baby's born and it's doing skin to skin with you and it's so beautiful and it's amazing, we have not weighed your baby. I don't know how much your baby weighs. That's like always somebody's question. How much does it weigh? Well, it's, it's, on, it's on your chest. I don't have a scale on it. And that's okay. Let your baby stay on your chest. Do your skin to skin for an, your hour, your two hours. The weight can wait not that important it seems important because that's what everybody wants to know when you're calling and texting family but you had a healthy beautiful baby and we want to start a beautiful breastfeeding relationship or even if we don't you want to bond with that kiddo leave him on your chest we'll weigh him eventually i don't know the weight the second it's born if i did i would do really well in fishing competitions where you have to guess the fish weight but i don't anyway those are my 10 things that your labor nurse wishes that you knew um comment down below if you're expecting and if any of these tips were helpful or if any of these tips kind of helped you look back on your experience a little bit better. Thanks so much for watching. Bye guys.